All right. Sounds like we're ready to go, Gary. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Gary Dunmire. I'm, I'm the city engineer here in Boynton Beach. And uh, tonight we're here to talk about a opportunity that we have is to apply for a grant. And one of the things we like to do is we like to get neighborhood input before uh, we push any projects forward. It doesn't make any sense for uh, us, the employees who work for you, uh, to come up with ideas to make the city better and then force them upon you and then find out that you guys don't, uh, don't want the improvements, you don't like the improvements. Um, this opportunity wouldn't come up except for there's a grant program that Palm Beach County has called the Transportation Planning Authority, and they offer grants and, and uh, for projects such as this. And, and this project qualifies for this grant because um, it's, it's adding sidewalks, it gets people um, out and mobile, and it gets them access to adjacent um, infrastructure that's you know important. Near you guys there are stores such as Walmart, there's schools across the street on the other side of Southeast 36th. And so all these uh, conditions make this neighborhood prime for uh, uh, grant money to, to fund the addition of sidewalks. Um, that being the case, uh, uh, Paula's on my team. She, her name's Paula Mendoza. She's a, 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 probably one of the brightest engineers I've had the opportunity to work with in my uh, almost 30 years of engineering. And uh, we're really lucky to have her at the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've given her this project because she's, you know, she's, like I said, she's bright and she's able to do all sorts of things. So she, uh, just her participation will make this a much better project should it, we find out from you, the residents, that, you know, that you want this project. So um, without any, before I, I give it to her to, uh, to start her presentation, I wanna take just a brief second to, uh, uh, first of all, thank you for coming. What's important to me as the city engineer is, is that uh, we're responsive to the residents' needs. Um, I've had residents call me or they finally got, get in touch with me and they're like, why haven't you fixed this pothole? Or, you know, they've got other issues in the city and they've assumed that I've seen them. And so they're frustrated with me that I haven't fixed, you know, either damage to the road or put up signs, places where they need signs or, or help them with speeding traffic. Um, I don't always get to see things and as you see things every day, because uh, you travel in different parts of the or different parts of the city than perhaps I travel in, I want to take this opportunity to encourage you to feel free to call me anytime or call Pal anytime with anything that you've seen or found, um, because we do care and we want to try to make sure that the city's um, the best it can be. And so we're always trying to trying to do what we can and and find little ways to to make the city better. So uh, with your help, I'd like to uh, hire you for a zero zero paying job to uh, report problems within the city to, uh, to Paola and myself. So um, that being said, uh, I'm gonna turn this meeting over to Paola and she's gonna tell us about her project. Yes. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, Gary. That's really kind of you. Thank you for your words. Um, like Gary said, I am Paola. I work with the Public Works Department and I am very glad to be here just to kind of talk a, lot, a little bit about what we've thought so far and Obviously, like Gary said, get all the input and the input from you guys to make this project hopefully a success. We'll see how it goes. Um, you know, as you all know, we're recording the, the presentation, hopefully to make it available for those that were not able to join us tonight to watch it later on. Um, and we we'll hope to, to post it on the website uh, for them to see. So first thing we're gonna talk about here is the project limit. So as we all know, we are in the Grayson Heights neighborhood. Uh, you all know where you live, so I don't think I need to go into too much detail about what's around you. Um, you know, just pointing out that we do have secrets on the west and the east on Federal Highway, Gulfstream Boulevard, um, you know, pretty important road that connects Delray and, and uh, Boynton. And then we have to the, to the north, that, that nice preserve area. And so the city of Boynton Beach recognizes that this neighborhood remains one of the very few city-owned roads um, that does not have right of, um, sidewalks inside the right-of-way. Um, and so we, we looked at this neighborhood and we thought that it would be a great candidate to, to improve these amenities on. So 
briefly, we'll talk about the project scope. We have as a goal, a, pro, a goal for our project is to provide a safe, convenient and comfortable travel pedestrian amenity that provides access for all users of all ages and all abilities. Okay, so what are we proposing? We're proposing to install ADA compliant five foot wide sidewalks within the city right away. We're proposing to put sidewalks on both sides of the road. With that, we're gonna install ADA compliant ramps at the roadway crossings as well. So just like, you know, we were talking to somebody just, just a few minutes ago, one of you mentioned, you know, why? Why are we doing this now? We, we've been in the neighborhood for a while, you know, why is the city choosing to do this now? And so there's a couple of things, there's really three things that we're considering um, as the city um, for putting these amenities in your, in your neighborhood. And the first one is safety. So um, well, I did some research and looked at some statistics and the Federal Highway Administration in their safety program says that there's about 4,500 pedestrians that are actually killed on the roads every year in the United States. Now, those pedestrians are killed while walking around on the road. And, you know, it's almost 8% of them that are getting killed while they're walking on the road. So this is a huge tragedy and we really wanna try to prevent it. The sidewalk will be that solution. So pro providing these walkways that are separated could prevent up to 80%, 88% of these fatalities. Roadways without sidewalks are twice as likely for pedestrian crashes to happen than those without it. So safety is a huge reason why we wanna do this project. Next, we wanna uh, improve our mobility ability. Um, actually, the city is working on a complete streets and mobility plan citywide. So we really are looking at ways to connect people better so that they could move around the city, not only via cars, like you know, we all do, but also allow different modes of transportation to, to be more available, to be better for those that need it. So providing these more comfortable facilities will actually increase the number of trips made by walking and particularly in areas that are mixed land users, such as, you know, your neighborhood, which, you know, you have schools and you have uh, shopping, you have local, local shops and and businesses in the vicinity. So hopefully having these amenities will attract more people to walk to these different places. Now, we also know that not everybody drives a car, right? And, and they rely on walking and public transit for their transportation. Children, adults, and other people with disabilities actually make up 37% of these people in the United States. So it's a, it's, it's a good number of people and hopefully, as I said, as we improve the amenities, more people will feel more comfortable to, to use them to transport themselves. So by providing the sidewalks and other types of pedestrian facilities, particularly when providing access to transit and schools, it could increase the transportation options for these individuals. So, you know, when talking about ADA and accommodating all kinds of disabilities and, and people's abilities to move around, having this, this sidewalk will really provide opportunities for them to be more independent in the way they, they, they move around. And so lastly, um, also the city is um, really wanting to have healthier communities. And the research actually indicates that people will walk for recreational purposes if facility is provided. So res residential walking is actually one of the easiest ways for people to get the recommended allotment of physical exercise each day. So having a sidewalk may increase the ability of people to walk and actually get their steps in. So here you have it. Those are the three reasons why we, as we think about the people, we like to include the sidewalk. So this next slide 
is actually just a zoomed in kind of picture of what we're proposing. We have conceptual plans. Like Gary said, we are in the process of applying for a grant. So these plans are not by any means final. We just have concept plans and I just put it out there just so that we could talk about it. And, um, but there, if, if there is any specific question or you wanna talk about your front yard or whatever it is, we'll have all the time in the world to do that. And then um, I actually have the full set of plans that I could open up so we could talk. But anyway, so as you can see in here, we are proposing five foot sidewalks on both sides of the road. Um, there is very small areas in the neighborhood that have a sidewalk already and we'll be improving that one as well. We'll be replacing it and making it um, compliant. So the city obviously intends to utilize the limits of the public right of way to accommodate the sidewalk, obviously, but it is committed to working with the residents to match the existing conditions on dry weight aprons if needed to be replaced. So if we have to replace your apron and you have certain kinds of pavers and things like that, the city is committed to working with the residents to try to match that to the best of our ability because they have been permitted, okay? Also, we are working to um, not impact everything that's in there. If we have any utilities, poles, um, maybe walls are already in the right of way, as you see it here, we are willing to make some accommodations. But obviously any kind of existing trees or landscaping or fencing that is inside the right of way will have to be removed or relocated obviously. And this will be done by the homeowner and it, it will be primarily done before construction. Otherwise the contractor will have to, you know, remove those during construction. But again, the city is very committed to working with you know, this is just the first of, you know, if it goes forward in more public meetings that we're going to have, um, we're willing to meet with you guys on, on the field and just talk about different things. Um, but you can see we're, we're proposing to put the sidewalk right by the, by the uh, right away line that provides more space between the road and the pedestrian there. So, you know, it's, it is really is the safer way to, to do it. Um, so I think that's all I have on that one. And so let's talk a, a little bit about the timing of the project because, you know, I just, it, it, I, I just kind of want to paint a picture of what time we're looking at here. So the grant that we're trying to apply is called Transportation Alternatives. And the TPA, the Palm Beach Transportation Planning Agency, is the one that puts it out. So this that you're looking at is actually the, the, the timeline. And this is you know, what we have to abide by. As you can see in 2021, we are in the process of the application submittal and is due at the end of February. We're gonna continue to work and do presentations to try to get the grant. If that goes well, then we'll start design on, the, on uh, 2022. Um, we'll do it locally, we'll do it here. We we'll use a consultant to do the, to finish the, the work. Um, and then the DOT and the TPA will be very involved in the design, but it wouldn't be until construction on 2024 that the funds will be available. So we're not talking about, we're gonna come and do this in a month or two from now, we'll, we'll come in, in, in three years or so. Um, so we're gonna have plenty of time to have conversations um, if there's anything that you're worried about. Um, so this, again, is to fund the project. And, you know, we, we're doing everything we can to, to get the funds so that we could provide this amenity and not have to use our, our budget uh, um, for other things that, you know, we talked about. So lastly, what I want to say is that we need your support. Uh, we cannot we don't want to do this project without your support and we cannot get the grant without your support so as you can see there's all my contact information same thing that you had in the letter that would have taken you here and thank you again for joining us um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be sending out another letter uh with a prepaid envelope and uh and just a, a form that says this is my name this is my address these are my comments and I support the project. So we're asking you as adjacent property owners 
um, that you will give us the support. Um, mail it back, email it back, um, test it back. <laughs> you know, now there's so many ways to, to do it. Um, just, you know, you can email me. I give you my cell phone. It's in my business card anyway. So, you know, it's out there. Um, we're, we're just happy to talk to you. We really appreciate your reaching out. And um, now we, you know, we're able to, to answer any questions. Maybe you could physically raise your hand if you have one or just use the little emoji reaction in the bottom of your, of your screen there to let us know you have a question. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and call your name so you could unmute yourself and um, yeah. So Gary is raising his hand there. Right, I'm just giving an example of, so if you go under reactions you can hit raise your hand that's what shows up on the screen. So feel free to, to do that if you want to talk and then we'll try to call on you in order. And then when you're done talking or you can lower your hand. All right, is there any, any questions or any comments please? So on, on the mailers that we're sending out to everybody, Clovis, I'll, I'll, we'll answer your question just a moment. Uh, and the mailers, Pala said, only send it in if, if, uh, if you have if you support, there's also a box on there that if you don't support the project, you can also fill that in and uh, send that to us. Cause you know, we're all, you know, obviously we, we want constructive feedback. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so uh, Clovis, I think you'd raise your hand. Uh, you're muted. I could unmute her. Okay. Yes, I have, yeah, I'm now unmuted. I have a couple of questions. One is just a frivolous question in terms of why was a project called Grace and, ha Grace and Heights? Is there a reason for that? Oh yeah. Um, initially, when your your uh, subdivision was platted, um, it was platted under the name Grayson Heights, and so uh, so we're, I just referred back to the plat, and that's how we got the name Grayson Heights. Is, so is that not common? My subdivision on my what do we call it? The paper that my deed is um, Gulfstream Estates. Okay, I'll have to look uh, look into. Yeah, uh, and there are a couple others. Plans. There are a couple other subdivisions in this area. So I just kind of wondered why that name was cha was chosen. Okay. Yeah. So that's my first question, okay. and my second question is: I understand you needing the letters of support for the grant, but I don't understand at this point how this project is going to impact me. Now, my background is that I am a, an advocate of. Um, individuals with disabilities. That's been my life's work. That's how I made my money when I worked. So I have no issues with, you know, upgrading the neighborhood so it meets ADA standards. That's not a problem. What I need to know is, as an individual homeowner, how will it impact me financially and how will it impact my property that borders, that's going to border the sidewalk? Uh, well, there's a couple of ways. Well, well for, first of all, um, within the right of way, if you have any irrigation, uh, we will be putting, you know, five feet from the right of way line towards the road, uh, we'd be installing a concrete sidewalk. And so how would that affect you? Uh, there could be a couple of things, depending on the existing slope of your driveway. Um, it might be that your driveway slope exceeds the ADA limits. So uh, I, I might be removing a portion of the driveway and installing it back in order to create something that's ADA accessible across your driveway. So that's one impact. If you have trees in the right of way that, that are yours and, and you're fond of, um, chances are you, the city would either A, relocate your tree to a different spot in your yard or perhaps um, give you a substitute tree and replacement of, of uh, something that maybe we take out. So there's a couple of options there. So impact would be irrigation impacts, uh, possible driveway repaving, and uh, you'll have an impervious area where people would walk and what you would have always perceived as to be your front yard, which is actually the city's right of way. Okay. Oh, um, uh, Jeremy, you were next, go ahead. And Clovis, we can come back to you if you'd like. I think it's Mr. Jim. Jim. It was actually Rick was before me. Okay, we'll take Rick, no worries. Rick, you're muted. Oh, oh thank you, Gary. Uh, thank you, Gary and Paolo for your work on this project. And I would just, uh, what I, my understanding was that the city right away is from 20, 
25 feet from the center of the road. Would that be right? Yeah, yes. If you have a 50 foot right away, and I think everybody in your neighborhood does, right? So if you go to the center line of road, 25 feet from that way would be the, the limit of the right away. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and how far into that 25 feet, Gary and Paula, would the sidewalk be? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you take some of these questions. Sure. I, I, I'm sorry. I know it was a, a nice uh, graphic that you put up. It was just a little small for me be, to be able to see from here. No, no, absolutely. So um, this is this is a you know the whole set of plans here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in uh, if I can here. So the the thick and the the thick dotted black line there um, represents the right of way. So, uh, can you zoom in a little bit more so they can see the existing road? There you go. And so these, these driveways represent where the existing driveways are currently. Mm -hmm. And so this, this is how the, the, basically the feel of your front yard would change. Does that help? We're at this point, we're proposing the sidewalk to be right next to where we know the right of way line is. Now, there, there could be some minor modifications, you know, if we wanna if we wanna have a little bit more room between the sidewalk and the right of way, those things could be modified. But this is the vicinity of where we proposing to have the sidewalk in the neighborhood. So there there would be an eight so foot. Oh, sorry, Gary, go ahead. No, that's, I, I was going to say there would be an eight foot swale between the sidewalk and the edge of pavement in front of your home. Okay, so basically the driveway would start just say at the 25 foot line and go to 20 foot. Uh, so it would be a five foot sidewalk. Um, and then what would that be? 25. So there'd be about uh, 15 more feet to the center of the road. Um, well, so you're, if, if it's 25 foot from the center line, uh, you'd have a five right. foot sidewalk, an eight foot grass swale, or if it's your driveway, an eight foot driveway, and then the edge of pavement. So you got a 12 foot wide paved road. So that, that's your 25 feet. Okay, I got you. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, just my initial commentary, um, Paolo and Gary, is I appreciate, and, and uh, I'm sure that um, all of us who care about people's safety would agree that it was nice to be forward thinking about that. I've lived in this neighborhood since 1987 and uh, frequently walk as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I walk every single morning. And my initial take on it is that people, um, the, the road is not as heavily traveled that would require a sidewalk and that uh, the, the people are kind of conscious who live in this area about speed limits so that um, if there's another area that's more heavily trafficked, perhaps that would be a place to consider putting the sidewalks in with a grant money that might be available for you. In short, I would just say my, my opinion is that it isn't needed in this particular area. And this is having even watched it uh, grow with, with the uh, installation of Walmart in the neighborhood behind us. It's just, um, it seems like people are coping fairly well with the existing road conditions. And I'm just curious if there was any statistics about injuries or anything like that that prompted your um, uh, identification of this neighborhood as the, as the location for the grant? Um, not necessarily. Um, like I said, the, the city is um, studying different neighborhoods in the city and um, really improving their mobility just throughout. And um, this was, you know, in the vicinity of schools and, and churches and, and other, you know, public transit and so forth that prompted us to pick this uh, as a good candidate. The, the neighborhood is a good candidate for uh, the improvements. So that's how, that's how we picked the neighborhood. Yeah, we, we, uh, we know how the grants are scored or We've, we've done this for a few years now, um, you know, with subsequent grants. And what we've found is there's, you know, uh, neighborhoods that are close to schools and close to within walking areas. 
uh, those are the types of uh, neighborhoods that the TPA likes to fund these types of grants for. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're, we're trying to find ways to get grant money used within our city. And so we're coming up, we're trying to find projects that uh, we can win that will improve the neighborhoods that, that don't cost the tax base money in order to fund. So that's what we're trying to do here. Right. Well, I'm sure all of us uh, appreciate your, your having your eyes out for grants that would allow things to improve without our con contributions. Right. Um, I would just, uh, from my point of view, would see that, that our neighborhood is A-OK -okay as it is and would just uh, request that you take a look at some other areas or perhaps consider uh, changing um, the parameters of the grant that so that so that the stretch along Gulf Stream, uh, there's already a sidewalk over mm, probably three quarters of it up to the railroad tracks and then um, over to across the railroad tracks, there might be a little more sidewalk. Uh, just thinking of, of ways to minimize the destruction of some of the natural beauty that's in the area, Gary and, and Paola. Um, so that so, so, I mean, some of the things that would need to be moved have, have actually been here since I've been here. And then um, some of the vegetation and things is probably 35 to 40 years old. That would be very difficult to replace even if it was a very generous allotment from the city. So just taking those uh, beautification into consideration as well as the degree of need, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards saying thanks, please keep looking, but I don't think we need it in our neighborhood. That's not to negate your work and your effort towards this. And um, I appreciate your continued efforts on our behalf. Uh, you're, you're welcome, Rick. Thank you. Rick, if, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you to lower your hand under reactions. <laughs> there you go. And then if, you, if another question comes to mind, just raise it back up and we'll come back to you, okay? Awesome. And, and uh, now I think we're with uh, Jeremy. Jim Madison, yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Jim, please. You want Jeremy or you want Jim? Jim, I will take you next, Jeremy, if you don't okay. mind. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Jim. Um, hi, how are you? Um, I, I joined a little late and I, um, I apologize for that. Um, first thing I want to say, I, I concur with everything that Rick has, has communicated. Um, I think that, and I would love if I could get a, a copy of the plans for, I, I'm on the corner of 34th. I'd, I'd like to see how it's going to affect my property. What you've said, uh, the eight feet between the sidewalk and the street is going to take out my all the landscaping, my side fence, my front fence, a, I don't know, Rick, a huge a black oak tree that's been there for 50 years. Um, my point to this is, I, I think that if you're going to put side, or you're recommending sidewalks on both sides of the streets, this neighborhood that that Rick and I, the other people, I'm not sure, you know, Jeremy and Lori, it's going to change the entire dynamics of the neighborhood. It's going gonna, it's gonna to affect tons of homeowners houses, yards, you know, fences, uh, landscaping, you know, so, you know, such that I, I think that if you're looking for the, the community to, to send in support for this effort, um, I, I don't think I can do that. I think, that you're, I mean, I understand what you're causing, what you're trying to do, but I do think people in our neighborhood do respect speed limits. We've got a lot of young children, um, but the residents in here are aware of that and animals and such. And it's, I've been here five years and I've never seen any sort of uh, accident whatsoever or near accident or heard about them. So um, the, I guess those would be my, my comments. The only other thing is I, I did join late and my curiosity about this, because I remember about six months ago, the, the uh, people in the street doing all the, taking all the measurements and everything, surveyors, is this a neighborhood that you targeted or was this brought to your attention by someone that requested the city put sidewalks in? No, this wasn't requested. This is uh, us being proactive, okay. trying to uh, make improvements in, this, in, in the city and neighborhoods within the city um, that we think are, are ripe for winning grants. And, and so, uh, you know, if it weren't for grant money being available and uh, Powell and I trying to actively get as much free money as we can. Um, so, so that's what this is. This is yeah. an endeavor for us to 
and I, uh, I understand that sidewalks do increase value in property in, you know, in neighborhoods. That's, um, uh, I will say on a side note, there are other, there are other efforts I think that could be done in our neighborhood, like repaving the roads or maybe, you know, addressing the swales and whenever it rains, there's flooding, you know, down in my area all over the place, but, but that's a, that's another issue, but, um, that just, those are my comments. Thanks for the time. Oh, you're welcome, Jim. Thank you. Jeremy, please. So I'm, uh, I'm right there with Rick, uh, as well as Jim. Uh, live on the same street as I do. Um, I've been here since 2006. Um, and again, I walk every morning, um, as well as Jim and, and Rick. I walk my dog. We're, we have, we all have dogs. We're dog lovers. We walk our dogs. Um, and I don't see any issues. We all uh, uh, definitely pay attention uh, to individuals that if they do um, we all work together with the speed limits and everything. There's no issues. Everybody's driving uh, at a nice uh, speed at that where nobody's being affected. Um, and again, the sidewalks, one question I did have. Um, so you said the sidewalks are gonna be five feet long or five right. feet, wide, sorry. Right. So is that, so some of the sidewalks in the neighborhood, I don't think they are five feet wide. So you said you were gonna dress and possibly fix those if this went through. So the sidewalks that are in the neighborhood previously that are right now are gonna have to be wider. Right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're proposing right now. Yeah. So you're looking at eight foot, eight foot swale plus an additional five feet. So you're looking at 13 feet of property loss, let's say per per resident with people that have shrubs, people that have trees, people that have fences. Um, and, and like you said previously, before we started the meeting, that would be a cost for each homeowner to no. have to possibly let's say possibly remove those trees, move those trees, move those fences on a cost per the household, per the individual that owns a home, correct? Right. right. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I'm, I'm all for safety. I'm all for, you know, these things that you guys are trying to work for. And as I don't want to repeat what we've already, uh, Rick and, and Jim have already stated, I, I prefer that you guys maybe possibly find some other area that may need this because this area, I, I feel we don't have any main roads other than obviously Gulfstream and Seacrest, but they're not heavy traffic coming through this neighborhood, period. So, right. uh, and you know, everybody just goes around our neighborhood and I walk the sidewalks on Seacrest. I walk the sidewalks on Gulfstream. Um, so, and you know, those are the sidewalks that I use if I'm gonna be out on a main road. Uh, but in this neighborhood, I just don't feel it's re relevant, and I just feel that it would uh, definitely uh, disrupt the neighborhood as far as uh, that, that's concerned with uh, putting sidewalks in. Okay. All Thank right. you, Jeremy. Thank you for the input. Um, it looks like Clovis has raised her hand again. Um, yeah. uh, Miss Alicia has been waiting, Gary. Oh, she has? Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Um, Alicia is going? Okay. Hi. Hey, um, I guess I had a lot of the same concerns as the other residents. Um, we've been here for a while and the, uh, I guess we get some traffic through our streets and my concern would be more like speed bumps, not putting sidewalks. The fact that we have driveways, we have vehicles, we have boats that are parked in our front yard they're gonna stick out into the sidewalks and how how do we you know, fix that? Uh, nobody has that much room to park two, three vehicles in their front yard. And if there's gonna be no street parking, there'll be no way that our sidewalks won't be blocked. Right. Yeah, those, those are uh, certain issues that will probably impact certain homeowners more than others. Um, well, I know when we we put in pavers, they completely restricted where we could put pavers because they had to be in a certain place and a certain width and length. And, you know, we couldn't put in what we wanted to put in to fit our boats and our cars and everything else. And now you want to rip that up and, and put a sidewalk in yeah, and we won't be able to fit. Right. Yeah, I mean, the, like 
like you said, they, they're, you, you, if you have a boat and right now it parks within at some portion of it was, it was within that 13 feet, there would probably be a conflict for you. Yes, it would. Um, I mean, we don't really get people speeding down our street on Southeast first, but there's definitely some stop signs that could benefit a speed bump. And that's about it. Right. Yeah. Uh, speed bumps are, are, are a different issue, but uh, just to touch on yeah. them briefly, because I think they've come up twice now, is uh, usually those are things that nobody wants in their front yard <laughs> because, uh, um, you know, you got to put them somewhere. And usually uh, in a neighborhood like this, it's going to be in somebody's yard, in front of somebody's yard. And uh, those do a couple of things. They, uh, they, they cause a lot of noise, people braking and then accelerating after they go over them. Uh, it it uh, slows ambulance response times or emergency response times. Uh, so there's a lot more detractors than, um, I, I understand the need for speeding, but uh, Pella and I are working on another solution for that. We've got some traffic calming that we're testing in other parts of the city. And uh, we're, we're anxious to, to see how the traffic calming goes. Uh, that way we have more tools to combat speeders. Um, but that'll come up and in, in probably sometime around June or July. And so uh, it'll probably be something that goes to commission. So if you guys pay attention to or attend commission meetings or at least follow what's going to appear in front of commission, um, you'll hear more about that probably come July. And I think we're ready to go to Clovis. Yes. Okay. Um, I had said previously, and I don't know if, in, in, uh, if everyone heard me, but I have been um, residing at, in my home since 1980. And I can give you stories about things that happened when I first came here, but we'll just leave that alone right now. What I'm gonna say to you, I have trees in front of my home that are 50 years old. They were mature trees when I came here. And I'm a little bit concerned about how this plan is going to impact my property. And I've not heard anything that would convince me as a homeowner to want to support this. Um, you know, I know that the city is looking toward getting, um, using this location to get grant monies, but that is not enough to convince me as a homeowner that I should support this project. Can you tell me something that might make me want to support it? Well, um, I, I try to do that by talking to you about the safety component, the mobility component, and the healthier lifestyles components. Uh, there has been studies, and as I said, I got uh, the information, the data that I presented from the, the Safe Highway Administration. Um, there has been plenty of studies that support the need for sidewalks in neighborhoods such as yours um, to improve the way that people walk around to improve their safety conditions when they are working on the roads. And these are statistics that are, you know, statewide or, you know, countrywide and everybody um, is moving into the direction of having better um, amenities in this neighborhood so that people don't only have to commute via cars so that it is safer for, you know, uh, moms and dads uh, with strollers on the road um, you know, you don't have to be right next to the car. The car doesn't have to pass you right by. You're separated, you know, in our case, eight foot away from any cars. Um, it's much safer for people with disabilities. Think about somebody on a wheelchair. It's not the same to be on a sidewalk than to be on the road. It just happens to be that in your neighborhood, you're not seeing them come up and down. But in reality, there is a lot of people with disabilities out there. There's people that are not able to walk as fast as many of us on this call. And those people need an amenity that will allow them to take their time. Um, we are going to put ramps and we're going to do ADA um, fixes for these people. If you are on a, on a wheelchair, you have no other choice than to walk on the, on the road. Um, you know, so that is really the, the, the need. The need is there because there is a need everywhere that there is not a sidewalk. Maybe not for you guys, because, you know, you're, you're, 
you're sharing that you don't have that need. But if we stop to think only about ourselves and think about those that we may not know about or those that I haven't spoken up, then there is a need. And so that's where we're coming from. And But we do understand and we're taking notes on everything that you are saying. And we're here to listen to you guys. Um, but the, the, the desire for the sidewalk is to improve the community as a whole, to improve the, the, the city as a whole. Um, and these are amenities that we want to put everywhere where there isn't an amenity. Um, if you go and drive around in, in Bowen Beach, most neighborhoods that the city owns the right of way, they are sidewalks. In any new um, developments that we're putting, we are requiring sidewalks. We do want people to be able to go to parks and to go to shop and to do things in a safer way. Because like I said, there is you know, 4,500 people that get killed on the roads in the United States yearly. So there are people getting into accidents. Um, I'm very glad it's not in your neighborhood. <laughs> Definitely, I'm very glad. But um, that is the need, Ms. Chloe. That's, you know, that's where we're coming from not particularly isolating your neighborhood and saying that, you know, there is a need here because we did some traffic studies. That's not what we're saying. We're saying in general, there is needs for these types of amenities in the world, in the communities, in the cities, you see? Thank you. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Um, anybody else has any questions? Um, yes, ma'am? Uh, Crystal Rivera is the name. No, uh, my name is David Rivera, but um, David, yes, sir. Um, okay. Um, I agree with my neighbors because I live in a corner lot right here, and I would like to know um, if you build the sidewalks, are you going to go to the dead end street too? We are proposing at this moment, yes, sir. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to lose part of my yard in the front and part of my yard on the on the side because um, um, that's going to impact me real hard. So you're on a um, corner lot. Right. Yeah. He's category. He's category and right across from me. Yeah. Okay. And and if you're going to do as well, like, like Jeremy says, he's going to take more. It's going to take more on my property. Well, I can think of one benefit for you. A, a little less mowing. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, and the, the unfortunate thing is that we all grow to think that that's our property is really not that is the city property. Uh, Obviously, we're not going to come and put anything in your property, but it is for save us as far of, as part of your yard. I, I do. I do realize that. And I probably feel the same way about the front of my house is my house. But, you know, it's, it's not. Um, I, I, yeah, I that's. Just, no, wanted to clarify, just to make sure that we we are in the same place. No, yeah, yeah, I understand, but I have to maintain it. You know, it belongs to you guys, but I have to maintain it. I have to maintain the sprinklers. I have to maintain the mowing, and I have to maintain everything. And even if you guys put that, I'm gonna have to still maintain it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, sir. I yeah, don't think definitely okay, there's there's two sides as to what we're proposing. We do realize that, sir. Yeah, I I don't think we need it in our neighborhood, but you know. I agree with um, all my one more thing just to point out as a, an added benefit. I, I, I live in Boynton Beach too, and I, I do have a sidewalk in, in my front yard. And the one thing, and I live on a corner lot. And so the one thing that, that uh, it's a benefit for me, but I don't know that I've ever quantified it, um, you know, before becoming a parent, uh, I, I find that the sidewalk is, is the staging area that my family uses to enjoy the outdoors. You know, so if, if my kids want to uh, rollerblade, you know, they, it's, they like to do it on the sidewalk. If, if my kids, my kids learned to ride a two wheel bicycle on the sidewalk in front of my house. And so um, not to say they wouldn't have learned to do that in the street or the street, would, you know, it's just, just everything that's organic about my family um, starts on the sidewalk in front of my house. So, uh, um, you know, so, some of us, not all of us have the same needs you know, from what, you know, not all of us need a sidewalk to have experiences with family or whatnot, but uh, it's just a possible benefit that some of you may not uh, have or have felt or know because, you know, you don't have one in front of your home. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too, is I, I don't want to make it sound 
like we're defensive and this is an idea we really want you guys to buy. If you guys don't want a sidewalk, that's to totally fine. I, I get that. Um, I was pretty excited about the potential of, of this project, but you know, if it's, it's okay if it doesn't work and, and I accept that, so. Thank you. So, um, Mr. Jeremy, Rick and, um, and Jim also have a question. I'm not really sure who raised their hand first, so. Jeremy, Jeremy here first. Go ahead, Mr. Jeremy. So I appreciate uh, 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 Gary, uh, you talking about uh, your family and, and obviously that's, that's the most important things for all of us is our families. Um, can I ask you a question? When you sure. live in Boynton, you live on a corner lot. Did you, when you bought that house, were there already sidewalks there? Yes, there were. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'd feel differently if somebody had to cut one into my yard. Sure. Yeah. So, um, and I understand, you know, what you're talking about. And we, uh, you know, we're, I feel we're a family oriented neighborhood. Um, there are a lot of kids, like uh, neighbors had said. Um, I do uh, appreciate, again, what you guys are trying to do. But again, um, one question that I did want to ask, is this going to be public knowledge of, let's say you're going to send out letters to us to check the boxes and what have you, what's the percentage or the amount that it's going to be a yes or a no uh, with uh, the neighborhood? Is that going to be public knowledge to us? Is it going to be a uh, 20 or 30 percent is going to be okay we're going to move forward with this or you know the statistics uh, what, what, what's the requirement of the grant so the requirement for the grant is that 25 percent um or more of the adjacent um residents are in support of the grant so um we, we have not thought about um, letting you guys know uh, those numbers, but if that's something that you would like, Mr. Jeremy, we could make that available. So uh, let me say a couple of things. Uh, so what, how many people are in the neighborhood, Paula? We count 114. So 25% right so of 114 would have to be in support of this. Uh, I, I haven't uh, ran this past the city manager. So, uh, you know, if, if uh, we get a, a huge, a percentage of the neighbors that say no we don't want it like if 75% of the neighbors say they don't want it you know and only 25% of the people say they do and yet we still qualify for the grant I don't I don't know that that's a go project you know I, I think we would say city manager uh, this is this is what we got um, tell us what you how you want us to proceed so um, you know one of the you know we don't make decisions in a vacuum so I'm, I'm sure that uh, uh, and I don't mind sharing all that data with you. Uh, the one thing I would do is to protect your neighbors. I wouldn't tell you who voted what. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind sharing data with, with the neighbors. Yeah, percentages of. Right. All right, I appreciate that. Um, and I do, I grew up in, uh, like I said, I was in Boynton in uh, 1976. I grew up in Gulfview Harbor. So mm -hmm. that's an old neighborhood as well that um, there's no sidewalks either. Um, in that neighborhood. Um, and I, I now know other neighborhoods that are older neighborhoods, uh, Chapel Hill, I know they do have some sidewalks and across from Chapel Hill um, on the east side um, neighborhood there, there's a lot of you know houses that don't have sidewalks as well. But um, again, I just feel for this neighborhood, I did like the idea of like a speed bump, not some harsh speed bump, but nice, easier, yeah bumps that you know that are not that don't destroy your cars i mean yeah. um, and i know that's not what you guys are working to do you're working to put sidewalks in but um if there was an issue with speed in our neighborhood or an issue with uh, those things yeah i think that would probably be the best fit for us but there's no issue with speeding and so forth so again i'm just gonna have to fall on that uh of a no-go with trying to put our sidewalks in because again i feel it's just going to be a disruption to the neighbor's uh, property as well as uh, financially for us uh, individually. Understood. Thank you guys though. No, oh, thanks. You're welcome, Jeremy. Rick, is your hand still up or? Yeah, thanks Gary and Paula. Um, hey, listen, before I even say what I'm gonna say, I, I wanna thank you guys for being so open-minded because uh, this is your baby. I can see how much work you put into mm -hmm. thinking it through and putting it out there. So I, I hope uh, neither of you 
take the feedback that you're getting tonight as um, discouragement. Um, I would just finish by, and la I promise this is the last thing I'll say. If you wanna look at this with cost benefit analysis, it seems like there's a high cost in terms of beauty and inconvenience for homeowners uh, compared to the relative benefit of what could possibly go wrong if people got hurt because we haven't had any evidence of people getting hurt in the neighborhood in the existing conditions. So please do look at the CBA before we move forward, okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Jim? I, I, I feel like I'm a broken record. I, again, I have to concur with everything Rick just said. Um, the, 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 and, and, and Jeremy answered my other questions. Uh, my one question is, again, to the, the possibility of speed bumps or repaving or, or, uh, or dealing with the flooding that we get whenever there's a, a, a not even a substantial rain, do I use the form? What, what's, what, what is the route for a, a neighbor to use to try to address those issues? Is that to go to that the Thursday night? I, they probably don't even have it now that would, with COVID and everything, but what, what's my best avenue to use to address the city about these issues we're having in our neighborhood? Uh, Jim, actually, if you could contact Paula and I tomorrow, uh, we, could, we could talk to you about that. It's, um, and we're happy to do it because you know we've got a, uh, an asphalt or pavement condition rating score for your road and all the roads in the city. Okay. And so we, we've got a five-year plan addressing the worst roads first. Okay. And uh, I don't think, I'm pretty sure that within the next five years, uh, provided that I'm able to spend $2 million a year, which is about nine miles of roadway a year, I don't know that I'm going to be able to get to your neighborhood within the next five years. So, um, I, and I know that, I know what you're talking about as far as the road conditions. The roads were microsurfaced. And so you're, you're getting a lot of, you've got some dark surfaces and then you've got some splotches of not dark surfaces. Uh, but I think the rideability of your roads for the most part is, is still in, in a decent condition. And so I, I think a lot of the issues in your neighborhood are, are more aesthetic, but um, it, it's been probably three or four months since I've been in your neighborhood, but that's what I seem to recall. Okay. No, I'd appreciate if you could reach out or, or we, could, we could talk. Sure. Uh, I, again, like everyone else said, I, I you know don't don't take all of their, our comments as being negative. It's just no. I think we're homeowners that that like our community. It's a it's a close knit community, and I just I, I personally I think the changes would drastically change many aspects of the neighborhood. Right. Um, but but we do appreciate all the hard work that you two have done on this. Well, I tell you, just talking to you guys, I can tell I like living in your neighborhood. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Absolutely. There's some nice houses, Gary. Check yeah. I will, I will. <laughs> Thank you all. Is there any other questions? We got about seven minutes uh, to, to go before we, we got to go. Is there any more questions or comments? I just want to say thank you for, for the hard work that you guys do. Thank and you. like Rick said and, and Jim, don't take it negative, but you know we're concerned about little things there. I've been living here for since 1997, and I love this neighborhood. I've been, I don't think I'm gonna go nowhere, you know. That's great, that's great to hear that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good to hear. I've been living in Boynton Beach for the longest, more than 30 years before I live over here. I love it wow. here. My, I got family in Orlando, and, and I don't change Boynton Beach for Orlando. I like it over here. Well, that's great. <laughs> Me too. That's great. Well, yeah, thank you. Um, I took notes and uh, we, we have your, your names down and please don't, don't hesitate to still uh, reach out if you happen to have anything else to say. Um, you're still gonna get those letters in the mail. We still wanna hear from the remaining of the residents. Um, and just like Gary said, we'll, we'll make sure we hear everybody out and um, make the decision based on your, on your comments. Um, and Pella, so, can you put up your closing screen one more time so it's got all your contact information on it in case somebody at the last minute wants to write down your phone number? Yeah. So let's see. Is that, can you see that? Uh, you still got the map on. I or the, uh, the drawing. Sure. Let's try yeah. that. There we go. So it's uh, her last name, first initial, and then at bbfl.us if you want to email. And 742-4. Uh, 
6266 if you want to call her. Thank you. All right, and with that, um, I think we will go ahead and finish the, the meeting, uh, unless you think we should wait another few minutes, Gary. Yeah, well, uh, Paula and I will stay online until everybody logs off on their own, but uh, we're here if you want to talk to us. That's right. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's our pressure. Thank you.